Hello, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm Dean from ESC Scott and I'm here to do another Eurovision news update for 2024. I've done this for the very first time as like a little test run last week and I really enjoyed it. So I'm here to do the second one, the second news roundup that we have for the world of Eurovision. And believe it or not, we've actually got quite a lot of news to talk about this week. So without further ado, let's play the intro. As of the day that this has been uploaded, there is only 43 days until the grand final in Malmö, Sweden. It's getting way too close for my liking. I'm just, I'm really excited to get there and have the week to just relax and enjoy it. Even though I'm probably not going to relax, it's going to be such a hectic week, but I'm so excited for it. 43 days until the grand final. I'm flying out on the 3rd of May, so we have 10 days to uh, create amazing content for you in Sweden and it's going to be so fun, I'm so excited. And if you are going to Malmö this year, tell me down below in the comments. So as I said over the past week, we have had some quite uh, big news within the uh, world of Eurovision. The first thing I want to talk about is the Eurovision Village. So SVT and Malmö City has now revealed more details uh, about the Eurovision Village. So it was previously announced that the Eurovision Village this year will be in Folkets Park. I think it's a very quite big grassy area where they'll have uh, room for like kind of stalls for food for the big stages that they're going to have as well i'm not sure if this is where the eurovision village was held in 2013 i don't know if it's different if they've changed it and it does look like there's a lot of effort being put into the eurovision village this year i think malmo is getting a lot of inspiration from liverpool because the eurovision village in liverpool was incredible and i know that they've took inspiration from that definitely the main stage at folkets park will be called the euphoria stage and they've already announced the opening act for the uh, Euphoria stage, and it's going to be Milena Ehrman, who represented Sweden uh, in 2009 in Russia. She's also probably more known for being Greta Thunberg's mother, but she represented Sweden in 2009. And they've also announced that other artists like Goa, who represented um, Ukraine in 2021, and Dota, a melody festival and artist, will be um, on this stage. I don't know if they'll be opening, but I think they'll be artists spread throughout the week. So um, they've been announced as artists that will be at the Eurovision Village this year, but there are obviously way more to come. There's also going to be a slightly smaller stage as well on probably on the other side of the village and it's going to be called the Tattoo Stage. So they're dedicating these two stages to the two Eurovision winning songs from Lorene. These are just the first details that have been released there. There's obviously going to be a lot more announcements made over the next coming weeks. But it does seem like the city of Malmö is putting a lot of effort into this. The Eurovision Village is always something amazing to look forward to if you're heading to the Eurovision whole city. So if you are going, definitely head to the Eurovision Village because it seems like it's going to be an amazing part of this week. Now something else that is very exciting happening this week is the pre-party season is beginning. So for the next three weeks there is going to be five pre-parties happening all across Europe. So a lot of the Eurovision artists are doing a European tour of these pre-parties going to each country trying to promote their song as much as possible. The first pre-party is happening this week, this weekend. It's Madrid. I do love this pre-party mainly because they do stream it online. I'm hoping that they're doing the same thing this year. They've done it last year so I'm assuming that they're going to be doing it again. I do love watching it, it's a very good pre-party. Would love to attend in the next few years as well. It's definitely the pre-party that I look forward to most. That's happening this week. Then Barcelona and the London pre-party will be happening next week. And then the weekend after that, it's Amsterdam and Stockholm's turn. And for me, the pre-parties is always exciting because it's kind of the beginning for me. It's the beginning of the actual Eurovision, not week, but like month. When you get really get excited for the show, it's so close. You know when the pre-parties come around, it's close, it's happening. And we get to see all of the acts perform live, so we get a little bit of an insight of what their vocals will be like and what we might get for staging-wise. And the pre-party season is always a time where a lot of favourites will change for people. So it's exciting. I love the pre-party season. It's coming up very soon. Madrid this week, Barcelona, London the next week, and then Amsterdam and Stockholm the week after that. And if any of you are going to the pre-parties, tell me down below in the comments, where are you heading to see these Eurovision artists? Now, for anyone that is attending Eurovision in Malmo this year, this news is for you specifically. So Scani Trafficking, I don't know if I said that right, I know that it's like a train company in Sweden, the main train company. They've announced that they are releasing special train tickets 
for Eurovision, the Eurovision week. Because they know a lot of the tourists that are travelling to Eurovision are going to be staying in Copenhagen, they know that they're going to be having to travel from Copenhagen over the bridge to get to Malmö for the shows. So they're releasing kind of speciality tickets for the Eurovision week. So they're releasing two types of speciality tickets. The first type is just if you're wanting to travel within Sweden. This is one for basically the people that are staying in Malmö, not Copenhagen. If you've got an apartment or you're staying in a hotel that's quite far out from the arena and from the Eurovision village, you can buy a speciality train ticket for the whole week, which is 350 sec, which is 30 euro. You can use that within the whole week and that gets you from where you are to the arena, to the Eurovision village, to Folkets Park. The good thing about uh, the trains in Malmö is that you can get to places quite quickly with these trains. From where I'm staying, it's like a five minute walk to the train station and then it's a 15 minute train up to Heli, where um, the arena is, the, the train stop for the arena. And then from there, you can get uh, the train up to the top of Malmö, where the Eurovision Village and the uh, Eurovision Club will be this year as well. So that's the ticket that I'll be purchasing. But if you are staying in Copenhagen, they're releasing a second speciality type of ticket where you can travel from Copenhagen to Malmö over the bridge all week with this one ticket there and back. And I think the ticket is actually very reasonably priced because if you were to buy a normal ticket, from Copenhagen to Malmö, each time you, you were planning to go, if you were there for the whole week, it would cost you hundreds, hundreds. But buying this speciality ticket only will cost you 700 sec, which is 60 euros. So much cheaper than what it would be if you were buying separate train tickets. So this is perfect. If you're staying in Copenhagen, you need to get on this. You have to get this ticket. But yeah, I'm so glad that they're doing this. I was sure that they were gonna because they done this in 2013 as well. So I don't see why they would not do it again. So I'm, I'm glad they're doing it. It does help us out a lot, the people that do travel to the whole city. This was something personally that I was really worried about, but um, kind of a weight off the shoulders now that they've released these speciality tickets. And if you are planning on going to Eurovision and you want to buy these tickets, uh, they'll be available on the Scan the Trafficking app from uh, April 15th to May 12th. Now, one thing I did want to touch on in this video was the odds, the odds for Eurovision as of now. Obviously, we shouldn't take the odds too seriously, but it is something interesting to look at on the lead up to the contest. So here are the odds right now. Obviously, Croatia has been the favourite to win Eurovision for weeks now since Baby Lasagna won Dora. It has a 17% chance of winning. Italy is in second place, quickly catching up with Croatia right now. 15% winning chance and Ukraine in third. Ukraine has always been high. Uh, in the odds for this year. So it's not a surprise with 11% chance of winning. Now it's only recently that the Netherlands has jumped over Switzerland to take fourth place right now. Netherlands obviously is gaining a lot more momentum. Europapa is being streamed so much. It's so popular right now on Spotify and in the Netherlands and Germany as well and all the neighbouring countries. People are really loving it. But yeah, Switzerland, Belgium, Greece, France, Israel and the UK make up the top 10 of the odds right now. And this is the 28th of March. First day, the 28th of March. Obviously, this is going to change. It changes every single day so it might not be the same when you're watching this it might not be the same now another exciting thing that happened this week was the first of the OJAE points uh, poll was revealed now if you don't know what OJAE is I'm not going to go full into it but it's just fan clubs from specific countries that compete in Eurovision so the UK has one France has one Germany has one Sweden has one most of them do actually but some are bigger than others OJAE UK is the biggest as of now, I think they have the most members. But each year, uh, each member from these fan clubs will vote for the songs, basically just like how they do in Eurovision, like 1 point, 2 point, 3 point, 4 point, and they'll accumulate that and announce it into the OJEE poll, and then they'll have a winner by the end. It's just exactly like Eurovision, but each jury is the OJEE fan clubs. And this week, the first results of the OJEE poll 2024 were revealed and it was France. OJEE France was the first club to reveal the points for this year. So here is how OJEE France voted. So as you can see, Belgium got their 12 points, Croatia got 10, Switzerland 8, Austria 7, Italy 6, Spain 5th, Netherlands 4 points, Ukraine got 3 points, Lithuania 2 points and Israel 1 point. This is always another exciting moment uh, in the uh, lead up to Eurovision when we get the OJEE poll points. It's always interesting to see who is the winner of this because sometimes the poll can be very 
different from the actual results. But yeah, over the next few weeks, we'll get more of the OJE poll points. And I'll announce them here as well. I'll talk about them here because I find it very interesting. So I will always talk about it in these news roundups because I find it interesting myself. I love talking about it. Now, very quickly, I want to talk about uh, some of the artists for this year. They've released some new versions of their songs. So Poland, Luna has revealed an acoustic version of the tower. You can go listen to that on her official YouTube channel. Now Nemo from Switzerland is going to be performing their song The Code on television. I think this week, I think they're going to be airing it. I think it might be today. I think it might be Friday. They've done a live performance earlier on the week. It's been pre-recorded, but it's going to be coming out this week at some point. But there was a little teaser revealed of the performance. And <laughs> good. Their vocals were good, the energy was amazing, so I'm looking forward to seeing this performance. I think it's going to be very, very good and a great insight to what we're going to see on the Eurovision stage. So be on the lookout for that performance because I'm going to be on the lookout. And also Tally from Luxembourg is going to be revealing her revamp of Fighter today as you're watching this. If you're watching this on Friday the 29th of March, Tally will be revealing her uh, revamp of Fighter. Now she has stated that this song is going to be completely reworked, there's going to be a lot of differences in here. So I'm excited to hear it, excited to hear what it's going to be like. But yeah, the revamp should be out now. And I think the biggest piece of news that came out of this week from Eurovision was the semi-final running order was revealed. So for semi-final one and semi-final two, the running orders have now been revealed. Cyprus is opening semi-final one with Luxembourg closing and Malta sadly is opening semi-final two and Netherlands is closing it. I think we've got two really good shows in our hands. I did do a video on each of these semi-finals reacting and analysing the running order. You can go check them out. I uploaded them a few days ago. If you haven't watched them, I'll link them down below so you can go check them out. So I reveal what I think in the videos. I'm not going to talk about it fully in this video because it's not a semi-final reaction video, but if you want to go check that out, you can. Now in last week's news roundup, uh, we talked about how Eurovision has been nominated for four BAFTAs. Well this week, Eurovision 2023 has won two RTS Awards, the Royal Television Society Programme Awards. Now these awards are also very important in the world of television in the UK. Not many TV shows get the opportunity to be even nominated for these awards, so winning two of them is incredible. So Eurovision 2023 took away the award for the live event of the year and the amazing and iconic Hannah Waddingham uh, won the award for entertainment performance for her role as one of the hosts of last year's show. Well deserved, I mean she deserves all the awards she deserved to be an EGOT. She's just amazing. Give her everything. Give her everything. There was a really funny video of her released after the award ceremony where she says she got asked the question uh, would she ever host the show again? Would you do it again? Uh, Eurovision? Oh my god. I was just saying to the guys that, you know, when it comes back to the UK, I will punch them square in the face if they don't do it. Is that too much pressure? I feel like it is, but hey ho. Literal icon, absolute icon. So she did say if it comes back to the UK or when it comes back to the UK, she would love to do it again. She is like kind of the new Petra Meda for me. She is the, the iconic Eurovision host that I want to see do it again. And I think we're going to get to see her do it again soon. But yeah, congratulations to the Eurovision team and to Hannah Waddingham for picking up two awards, the RTS Awards. Amazing, absolutely incredible. Now the final piece of news I want to talk about today is uh, for the people that are travelling to Malmo and you don't have tickets yet, this is for you. Now the EBU and SVT has announced that there will be more tickets revealed. It will be the final wave of tickets though. And if you don't have tickets for Eurovision and you are going, well then you better get on the phone, on your iPad, on your laptop, onto Ticketmaster because the final wave of tickets will be released on April 5th at 10 a.m. Central European time. There has been tickets kind of cropping up here and there from the resale and from actually just general sale. I have seen a few tickets kind of crop up onto the site. So if you've been lucky to get one, tell me down below uh, what shows are you going to. Tell me down below if you are going to Eurovision, what shows are you going to. But if you haven't got tickets yet, there is still hope for you. You can go and grab some on April the 5th at 10 a.m. Central European time. And it's for all nine of the shows. It's not just the live shows or the previews. It's all nine of them. So there will be tickets for every single show. And there we have it, the news for Eurovision 2024 this week. Tell me down below what piece of news were you most excited about this week? And also tell me down below if you've got any tickets to the shows. Are you going to Malmö? And yeah, we'll have a little conversation about it. Thank you so much for watching this news roundup for this week. I'll be back at the same time next Friday for another one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See you then and bye-bye.